whenever we reach apologizing our mesh, we should always look to include edge loops and poly loops inside of the structure of our three-dimensional model. I've opened up my bear here and I've just painted a few little uh, face sets to help us define what those loops look like and their larger function and service to the model itself. Let me zoom in on the eyes. I think that's probably the best way to really understand the power of loops. A loop is a singular row of polygons that starts in one space, wraps around in a circle, and then connects back onto itself. If I was to go into edit mode here real fast and just jump into my polygonal selection set, you can see that here is a loop. It starts in a very specific location and then it travels around in a circle or circular manner and then connects back onto itself. We want to comprise the, our entire model with as many edge loops as we can. These loops define the boundaries of when certain features of our models start and stop. If you look very carefully here, I have a couple edge loops that define the boundary of our eye. And you can see that the topology reinforces and, and strengthens my ability to go in and sculpt the interior detail of that eye. In addition to defining when these objects start and stop, they also allow us to edit with a little bit more accuracy and control. For example, let me just jump over into my edge selection mode. I'm going to double click on just this edge here. And then under the select pull down menu, if I go to select loops, select loops in a region, it's going to select all of the polygons inside of that loop. So it immediately enhances our ability to make instant, almost instantaneous selections and intelligent selections that are based off of the properties of the loop itself. Now loops also give us these zones of deformation as well. And you'll see this when we start looking to do some character rigging for your model in, uh, in, in, in future courses, right? So now with these loops in place here, check it out. I can go in and I can create a blink. Okay, I can close the eye. Now in this one, there's not enough resolution on that next loop to get the eye to completely close. I got the eyeball in there as well. And this also showcases the power of loops because we can add additional geometry on the inside of the loops and it won't change the overall model. So they're heavily editable, which is pretty cool. Let me jump back over in to, oops, excuse me. Uh, I'm in my edge selection mode. I'm gonna hold down control R, which is gonna fire off the loop slice tool. And now I can place a new edge segment on the interior of that loop which gives me the ability to very quickly add more polygons and get the level of deformation that I'm after. So loops just give us power. They give us control. They give us flexibility inside of the entire 3D modeling pipeline. They define when and where certain features of our, of our model begin and end. We want to define these boundaries with loops as much as we can so that one feature doesn't influence another. The ears are another such a wonderful example of this idea. As you can see, let me just jump in, edge or poly, poly selection mode. Here's a loop. Oops, excuse me. I double clicked on accident. Here is a loop. I'm going to go into my paint selection mode. And you can see that I've defined this entire area with a loop itself, which gives me both a visual and a structural start and stop to the area of influence that the ear has. And actually, to be honest with you, Full disclosure, the loop for this for this ear actually extends out over inside of here. If you look carefully, you can see there's a corner here. This is called a five-sided star. This guy right here, because we have this one, two, three, four. We have five polygons that all influence and interact with a singular vert, vert right there in the center itself. So these little stars are really a great visualization as to the boundaries or where the boundaries of these loops, where these loops are. Okay, so if I go in, I'm just gonna do my selection here again. So select, select loops, select loop by inner, inner region, there's the ear. Now the topology with these loops allows me to add interior detail to this loop without it, without it having to influence the rest of the mesh. If you look carefully here, the density of the polygons in the ear goes up as it should because there's a lot of small information packed in a very tight spot, right? But I don't want to have uh, all of these loops passing outwards and into the rest of the mesh itself. 
these loops create boundaries and the flow of the polygons is only with inside of that boundary. So it allows me to save a lot of information traveling down to the back of the poly, uh, back of the bear um, to, get, to get the result that I'm after. So these boundaries stop polys from flowing outwards outside of those boundaries. So they give us a tremendous amount of control and flexibility when we're looking at the total mesh as well. Okay. So loops can come in a lot of different shapes and flavors. The, uh, the, the best one are these ring loops, these poly loops here, but we can also loop geometry back into themselves, okay? We like having geometry flow around in, in structures like this, okay? See how this loop goes all the way around the neck of the bear? That's a great bit of geometry. It's a great loop. It goes from one mesh to another. It defines a natural boundary between the neck of the animal and the base of the animal. If you look carefully, we have another loop down here for the boundary of the legs of our bear. Each leg has one. There it is. We can easily select it. Oop, there's the entire leg. They also produce the boundaries for all of our UV islands as well. The best texture artists place seams that define the start and stop points of all of these boundaries. We don't want to have a boundary that has a jagged edge. By having the boundary of our UV seam be circular, believe it or not, it's going to become more invisible, which is what we're after. We don't want UV seams to be, uh, to be very noticeable. At times, loops can loop back onto themselves, and I had to do that for the rear of my bear. If you look very carefully down here, I have a big problem. The flow is, is uh, getting pretty intense. I have a lot, of, a lot of polygons that are starting up here at the top of the head, and then they're flowing back towards the rear of the bear. Well, I have more polygons at the, at the head than I do at the rear. I don't want to have a zillion polygons back there because it's going to increase the density of the entire mesh. So I need to do something. I need to terminate these polys, uh, these loops of polygons back onto themselves. And that's what I've chosen to do here. So loops can come in a couple different flavors. We like ring loops. We can also have what I like to call return loops. And it's these guys. If you look carefully here, I'm just going to my tweak tool. If you look carefully, I have an entire row of polygons that curves and deforms back towards the head of the bear. They don't terminate like they do down here at the, at the conclusion of the, of the leg. They go back up. They go this way and they connect back up to these loops. See how they terminate just quite wonderfully into the ear itself. So these loops, so here's the loop for the ear and then it sends a new row of polygons going back that way. And that row of polygons goes all the way back. So it goes all the way back here, and then it loops back on the other side and connects to that side of the mesh as well. If we do this carefully, what we're gonna generate is a true symmetrical object. We have a center line inside of this mesh that makes this half different from this half down here, okay? And that's what we're after. And that's all thanks to looped geometry. It gives us the most control, the most flexibility, and the highest results when we use loops. It also enhances our multi-resolution sculpting format. It gives us the most control when defining and crafting our UV maps and our custom textures. So working with side, inside of the polyloop system is only going to benefit the overall quality of your sculpture.